Hi, I'm John Everett with CERN Industries. Today I'd like to show you how to recommission a Model 375XL Reduced Pressure Principle Assembly when we're getting ready for the irrigation system. Now in a previous video, we showed you how to winterize your irrigation system. Basically, that was a procedure to blow air through your entire zones, clearing all the water out so that the, the irrigation system doesn't freeze in the winter. But now we're headed into the spring, and we need to get that irrigation system back up and running. So what we have here again is the body of a 375XL, and we left in it our blowout flush fitting. We used this fitting to put the air into the system when we were uh, getting ready to winterize. We're going to use the same blowout flush fitting to flush out the incoming piping before we reinstall our backflow preventer. So what we're going to do in this particular case, first off, I'm going to attach a normal simple garden hose to my blowout flush fitting. And this will allow me to flush out all the incoming piping and to flow that dirty water off to a safe drain. Once I get that garden hose attached, I'm simply going to turn on my ZW3 winterizer valve and I'm going to charge the inlet of the backflow preventer with water. Now, anytime, with any valve, no matter what it is, you always want to go about this procedure very slowly. In other words, crack your incoming water valve until you can hear the water moving into the system. We never want to open anything rapidly because we can create water hammer and that can damage our valves and damage the downstream piping. So again, I've cracked my ZW3 winterizer. I can hear the water flowing into this incoming riser, and as soon as I stop hearing that flow of water, I can go ahead and fully open that ZW3. Now I've got my incoming riser charged with water. I simply want to open up the incoming ball valve to my backflow preventer slowly, and now all of the water inside this, this riser is now going to come flowing out of this garden hose to a safe drain. And once again, what we're trying to do is simply flush out the system. When you sit over the winter, you're going to have calcification built up in there. You can get bugs inside. There's a lot, of, a lot of things that can get in the incoming water line. We basically want to flush that material out because if we don't, we'll foul our backflow preventer when we put it back in line, and that'll cause us to have to go in and clean that out. And that's just more time consuming, and we can really avoid that by proper flush. So now that I've got this going through and I'm flushing out that incoming water line, most people think, fine, that's good enough. No, flush it just a little bit longer. In fact, open it up and get a good high velocity moving through there to knock out all that debris. Once we get that accomplished, now we can go ahead and shut off our incoming ball valve. We can remove our garden hose and we're going to take the blowout flush fitting out and put the backflow preventer back in. So now I've got my garden hose removed. I want to take my Phillips screwdriver and remove these two screws from the wedge. The wedge is what's holding that blowout flush fitting in place. I simply slide the blowout flush fitting, it'll lift on out of position, and in its place I'm going to install my actual backflow preventer. Now before I do so, on either end of my backflow preventer I will have O-rings those O-rings are what seal up inside the backflow preventer body itself. We want to make sure that we have lubricated those prior to putting them in. Just a light little thin film of lubrication utilizing a lube that's acceptable for potable water. Lubrication helps O-rings seal and it facilitates that seal. They crave that lubrication. So we've lightly lubed and we've reinstalled those O-rings and I simply put my blowout flush fitting back into the body, take my wedge and put it into position and tighten down the screws on the wedge. Now one thing as we're tightening these screws, I want you to exercise caution. You can basically tighten them up by finger tight and I'd say give those screws maybe no more than about a half to a full turn. You don't want to over tighten. If you do, you'll cause some listing of the sleeve inside and we could have a little bit of leakage come out. So don't over tighten those screws. Just give them about one full turn after finger tight. Once we've got that reinstalled, if you recall, we have pressure all the way up to the incoming ball valve. What I'm going to do is crack that incoming ball valve until I fill the body up with water. At this point in time, it's always good practice to open up the test cock a little bit, crack each one of them and let the air out. Quite frankly, the 375XL is self-bleeding, it'll throw it downstream, but it's just good practice to open those up. So once we've opened up each one of the test cocks, got all the air out, we can go ahead and fully open our inlet shutoff valve. Now we're going to fill the remainder of the irrigation system. And just like we talked about on the incoming ZW3, we don't want to open this wide open. We just want to crack our outgoing ball valve to slowly fill the downstream piping. By doing it slowly, we'll prevent any problems with water hammer. 
Once we can listen, we'll hear the valve, we'll hear the rush of water going through there. When we no longer hear that water, we can go ahead and slowly open it all the way. And at this point in time, our backflow preventer has been recommissioned and it's ready to go. Now, as far as the irrigation system, you'll want to manually go to your controller and run it through zone to zone to zone, check out your sprinkler heads, make sure nothing's broken, all the typical things that we would do when we're bringing up an irrigation system in the spring. But the main thing was to blow out that inlet debris through the, the blowout flush fitting and also to reinstall our backflow preventer and we have accomplished that goal. Should you have any questions about this procedure, never hesitate to call Zern Industries. We're here to support you, uh, we'll walk you through this procedure, we'll guide you, uh, maybe even direct you to the authority having jurisdiction if you have code questions, etc. We're here to help you and support you with this procedure.